Hey everyone, so today we are going to see how to solve this inequality using Jensen's inequality. Okay, so uh, well, whenever you have a problem on Jensen's inequality, uh, one should know or one should choose function. Okay, because once you have a function, then only you can apply Jensen. Now here, if you can see the left hand side, it is square root of something square plus one. So if you can see square root is fixed, plus one is fixed, the term inside the square are changed. By looking at this, one can see one can choose f of x to be square root of x square plus one. So that's just the guess that one should do by looking at the inequality. So let us choose that function and let us try to apply Jensen's inequality. But wait, what is Jensen's inequality? Let us recall that. So Jensen's inequality says so if you have a function f which is a convex function, then if f is convex or one can say concave up over the interval i and you take the points x1 to xn belongs to i then your f satisfies this inequality okay there is one more a general inequality but that i'm not going to state because for this problem this is sufficient for me and actually the same result go if you have a concave down function the only thing is the inequality gets reversed Okay, now by looking at the inequality, what we guess, we thought that let us choose the function to be square root of x square plus 1. Now, we need to check whether this is concave up or concave down. Okay, then only we can apply the Jensen's inequality. So if the double derivative is positive, then concave up. If it is negative, then concave down. Right? If you apply, if you take the derivative, then by chain rule, one can see that the derivative of the function is nothing but x upon square root of x square plus 1. Now, if you take the double derivative of the function, you need to apply your, the quotient rule of derivative. So, denominator into derivative of numerator minus numerator into derivative of denominator whole divided by square of denominator. Right? And now, if you try to uh, simplify this further, if you do the cross multiplication and cancelling, what do I get? So, 2 to gets cancelled. So if I do the cross multiplication over here, I have x square plus 1 minus x square whole divided by x square plus 1 raised to 3 by 2. Okay. So, again, this x square and minus x square will get cancelled from the numerator. Now, is this positive or negative? The numerator is positive. Here x square is positive, 1 is positive, so addition is positive. So its cube and square root are finally also positive. So your f double dash is strictly greater than 0. This implies your f is a concave up function. Therefore, we will apply the first this for inequality. Okay, so if I try to apply this inequality over here, what do I get? Now, what x1 to xn I should choose, right? If you see, I have 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square and so on, right? So you choose x1, x2 up to xn is 1, 2, 3 up to n. So that's another thing that you have to choose by looking at the inequality. Okay, so this is f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of n whole divided by n. But this is easy, right? This is what is f of 1? Root of 1 square plus 1. What is f of 2? Root of 2 square plus 1. What is f of n? It is root of n square plus 1 whole divided by n. Now here, instead of applying directly this function value, we will first simplify the term inside the function. Otherwise, it will become very complicated. Now what is this? 1 plus 2 plus n is the sum of first n natural number. and It is given by n into n plus 1 by 2. And this n will come as it is. n will get cancelled. Okay. If I write on the new page, what I have, I have f of n plus 1 by 2 less equal root of 1 square plus 1 plus of n square plus 1 whole divided by n. But now what is this? This is root of n plus 1 by 2 the whole square plus 1 less equal as it is. So if I simplify this, this is n square plus 2n plus 1 plus 4 whole divided by 2 plus equal this whole thing now this denominator n we take over here so i have n by 2 
square root of n square plus 2n plus 5 that's equal to the numerator part and i think this is what we wanted to prove okay so when whenever you have a problem on inequality either first to think of lagrange value theorem if that doesn't work then think of jensen's inequality i hope this helps you if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comments